It's Mrs. Ferris from Wood Library, and it's, are you ready for some bedtime stories? Because Bernard and I are. So let's get started. By the way, I'd love to have you leave some comments about it, saying hi or whatever, so I know who's watching, and I'll answer after the program. We're gonna have, I think, four books tonight, some finger plays and songs, some fun on the flannel board, and then we'll finish up with our going to bed book. So let's get the first book. Now I chose this one because this Saturday, in case you didn't know, is ice cream for breakfast day. And this is a story all about a very, very special ice cream cone. And if you tune in on Saturday, you can have a whole program of ice cream stories. And also you can learn how to make your own ice cream at home. This is called Simply Delicious. It's by Margaret Mayhew with pictures by Jonathan Allen and it's published by Orchard Books. Oh, look at all that ice cream. Do you like ice cream? I know I do. One evening, as he rode home on his faithful bike, Mr. Minky stopped at Muffin's Corner Store and bought a double dip, chocolate chip, and cherry ice cream with rainbow twinks, twinkles and chopped nut sprinkles for his little boy, Finnegan. Now, how will I get this double dip chocolate chip and cherry ice cream home before it melts? Hmm, I know. I'll take the shortcut down the lumpy bumpy jungle track. It runs right into my own backyard. Well, Mr. Minky bounded onto his bike and shot off along the jungle track. Giant bamboos arched over his head. Leaves as large as dinner plates brushed against his busy bicycling knees. Mr. Minky lifted the ice cream high into the air to keep it safe and waved it around to keep it cool. I like the look of that double dip chocolate chip and cherry ice cream with rainbow twinkles and chopped nut sprinkles, said one butterfly to another. Simply delicious, the other replied. So off they fluttered at bicycle speed, hovering over the ice cream and trying to land on it. Mr. Minky began swinging the double dip chocolate chip and cherry ice cream in circles, hoping to baffle the butterflies while keeping the ice cream cool. A toucan, who was perched on a swaying bamboo, saw the ice cream bumping along the track below. Mmm, I love the look of that double dip chocolate chip and cherry ice cream with rainbow twinkles and chopped nut sprinkles, tweedled the toucan. Simply delicious, and it dived and darted at the ice cream. <clears throat> Mr. Minky, biking hard, swept his left hand down and held the double dip chocolate chip and cherry ice cream at knee level. Waving it in circles to baffle the butterflies, taunt the toucan and keep the ice cream cool. The butterflies fluttered, the toucan dived and Mr. Minky bounced up and down and up and down as he biked along the lumpy bumpy jungle track. A spider monkey peering out from under the creepers saw the ice cream lumping and bumping by only inches from its own nose. Ooh, I love the look of that double dip chocolate chip and cherry ice cream with rainbow twinkles and chopped nut sprinkles, said the spider monkey. Simply delicious. And down it swooped on the ice cream. Mr. Minky whipped the ice cream up once more, holding it straight out in front of him. And then he waved it up and down to baffle the butterflies, taunt the toucan and muddle the monkey and keep the ice cream cool. The butterflies fluttered, the toucan dived, the monkey swooped and Mr. Minky bounced up and down, up and down as he biked along the lumpy bumpy jungle track. A ferocious tiger glowering in its lair saw the ice cream speeding by. I like the look of that double dip chocolate chip and cherry ice cream with rainbow twinkles and chopped nut sprinkles, snarled the tiger. Simply delicious, and it sprang for the ice cream. But Mr. Minky quickly tossed it from his left hand to his right, catching it in midair. 
Holding it at arm's length, he swung it from side to side, hoping to baffle the butterflies, taunt the toucan, muddle the monkey, and trick the tiger, and keep the ice cream cool. The butterflies fluttered, the toucan dived, the spider monkey swooped, the tiger sprang, and Mr. Minky bounced up and down, up and down as he biked along the lumpy, bumpy jungle track. A huge crocodile was sunning itself on the riverbank. In between the leaves as large as dinner plates, he saw the ice cream sweeping by. Ooh, I love the look of that double dip chocolate chip and cherry ice cream with rainbow twinkles and chopped nut sprinkles, croaked the crocodile. Simply delicious, and it lunged at the ice cream. But Mr. Minky tossed the ice cream high into the air, and as it came down, he cleverly caught it on his toe. He kicked it up into the air again, caught it on his elbow, flicked it high, tilted his head back, and then caught it once more, this time on his nose. Oh my. The butterflies fluttered, the toucan dived, the spider monkey swooped, the tiger sprang, the crocodile lunged. Mr. Minky kicked right and left, keeping them at bay, bouncing up and down, up and down while balancing the ice cream on his nose as he biked along the lumpy, bumpy jungle track. And at long last, he burst out of the jungle, shot up his homemade ramp, flying through the air across the back fence, gliding gracefully into his own back garden. Little Finnegan ran to meet him. Mr. Minky tossed his head, caught the ice cream as it flew through the air, and held it out to Finnegan. Seeing the double dip chocolate chip and cherry ice cream with rainbow twinkles and chopped nut sprinkles, Finnegan shouted with happiness. He swept his tongue across it in grand style. <gasps> Simply delicious, he yelled. I feel quite hungry myself, said Mr. Minky, sniffing and smiling at Finnegan's joy. Hungry? Oh, the crocodile looked at the tiger and licked his lips. The tiger looked at the spider monkey and licked his lips. The spider monkey looked at the toucan and licked his lips. The toucan looked at the butterflies and licked his beak. Simply delicious, they cried and they began chasing each other back through the jungle along the lumpy, bumpy track. Mr. Minky put his bike in the shed and went into dinner. Oh, spicy pie and scrumptious pudding. And you know, his dinner was simply delicious. I wonder if he wished he had some ice cream. Just as a reminder, our ice cream for breakfast that we usually have on Saturday is going to be virtual, and that's why I'm going to be teaching you how to make your own ice cream. And you can make it and then watch the stories about ice cream. But right now, can we do a finger play about something else you might eat? Can you get your five hot dogs ready? I've got my five little hot dogs. They're cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So four little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Three little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Two little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So that leaves one little hot dog cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the one went bam. So now there are no little hot dogs cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the pan went bam. Well, I thought that there were a lot of animals in that story, but all of the animals stayed in the jungle at the end. Did you notice that? Not in this story. This is called, If All the Animals Came Inside. It's written by Eric Pinder, 
and it's illustrated by Mark Brown. Somebody's asking about the special ingredients for the ice cream. I'll talk about that at the end if I remember, but otherwise they will be on our YouTube channel right along with the video. Not very much, but I'll try and remember to tell you at the, well, actually, why not tell you now? You're going to need half and half, some sugar, some vanilla, and if you want to make chocolate ice cream, you're going to need some chocolate sauce, like you'd put on ice cream. Then you're going to need some coarse salt. You can probably use table salt, but coarse salt, like a kosher salt, works better. And then you'll need ice. That's it. All right, so let's find out about if all the animals came inside. And I wanted to mention, Mark Brown is the illustrator of this book. He's the one that does all the Arthur books. This is published by Little Brown and Company. And there are all the animals. Do you think they're going to come inside the house? I hope not. Well, if all the animals came inside, my brother would cry and my sister would hide. My doggie would bark and the kitten would hiss and my parents would make funny faces like this. But I wouldn't look for a place to hide. I'd climb aboard for an elephant ride. Thump, rump, bang, bump. The walls would tremble, the windows would shake. Oh, what a terrible mess they would make. When all the animals played hide and seek, I'd cover my eyes, but the monkeys would peek. They'd laugh and they'd point, they'd swing and they'd run. I'd hide with a hippo and have so much fun. Crash, bash, zoom, boom. The walls would tremble, the closets would quake. Oh, what a terrible mess they would make. When all the animals wanted a snack, the skunk and the panda and even the yak would rush to the kitchen and chew up our food. Mommy would tell them to stop being rude. Lunch, munch, burp, crunch. The walls would tremble, the dishes would break. Oh, what a terrible mess they would make. When all the animals needed a drink, they'd slobber and drool all over the sink. The badger would blubber, the grizzly would burp, my sister would mutter, it's not nice to slurp. Phew, phew, ick, ooh, the walls would tremble, the cupboards would shake. Oh, what a terrible mess they would make. The lions would roar as they sprawled on the floor. The lemurs would lollygag right by the door. My daddy would try to sit down in his chair. He'd holler and whoop with a porcupine there. Ow, wow, ouch, youch. The walls would tremble, the sofa would break. Oh, what a terrible mess they would make. The gibbons would giggle, hyenas would laugh. The ostrich and I would go race a giraffe. We'd follow the bears as they ran up the stairs. We'd bounce on the beds and knock over the chairs. Rumble, jumble, pounce, bounce. The walls would tremble, the dressers would shake. Oh, what a terrible mess we would make. At bath time, my daddy would stammer and stare. You can't take a bath with an octopus there. The faucet would leak, the floor bathroom would flood. Daddy would slip and he'd land with a thud. Splish, splash, slip, splat. The walls would tremble, the toilet would shake. Oh, what a terrible mess we would make. When all of the animals wanted to play, they'd grab all my toys, they'd take them away. Upstairs and downstairs and out in the hall, the chipmunks would draw with my paint on the wall. Wibble, scribble, wipe, swipe. The walls would tremble, the crayons would break. Oh, what a terrible mess they would make. The bats would be dealing my cards on the ceiling. The squirrels would be squealing, the paint would be peeling. The rhinos downstairs would be watching TV. They'd stand in the way and leave no room for me. Spilling the popcorn and causing a riot, whooping and snorting, they'd never be quiet. 
every last creature would sleep in my bed with oodles of pillows, one for each head. Look at them. From sunset to sunrise, the wolves and the owls would keep us awake with their hooting and howls. We'd have nowhere to sleep, so we'd stretch and we'd yawn. We'd pack up our tent and go play on the lawn. As fun as a house full of critters could be, my dog and my kitten are plenty for me. But oh, what a wild and wonderful ride when all of the animals came inside. I'm gonna go back one page to where they're watching TV. Actually, it's a couple pages, isn't it? Can you see what they're watching on TV? I think Mark Brown snuck that in. It's Arthur and DW. <laughs> all right. Well, that was pretty silly. So let's see. Maybe we should do something about some silly monkeys up in a tree. Five little monkeys swinging in a tree, teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. But along goes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes, snap! So hide one of your monkeys. Four little monkeys are swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes, snap! So three little monkeys are swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes, snap! Two little monkeys are swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes, snap! So now there's one little monkey swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes, snap! So that means no little monkeys are swinging in the tree. I'd better watch out so he won't catch me. Well, this is a story all about sharing, or not. This is called Hands Off My Honey. It's by Jane Chapman with pictures by Tim Warrens. And it's published by Tiger Tales. Looks like we're going to be in the forest. There's a bear, and can you see what he's got? A big jar of honey. Bear stomped and stamped to his hollow by the big oak tree. The ground rumbled, the daisy shook, and the leaves trembled in the trees. I have a great big jar of delicious honey, Bear bellowed and it's all mine. Bear looked around, but everyone had disappeared. Don't even try to take a pawful, he boomed. I am the scariest bear in the forest and I won't share a single drop. The woods were silent. Even the birds stopped chirping. The only sound was the slurp of Bear's tongue as he licked. Mmm, yum, yum. Now, Mouse and the Rabbit Brothers and Mole peered out of the bush. That jar is enormous and he's keeping it all to himself, whispered Mouse. Well. I love honey, and I'm going to get some. Is anyone with me? The rabbit brothers both raised a paw. Mole looked at the honey. I'm in. So Mouse picked her way carefully through the branches. The rabbit brothers held paws and began tiptoeing cautiously when snap. Oops. That was me on a twig, whispered Mole. Get down, hissed Mouse. 
bear's eyebrows lifted. The animals held their breath. <gasps> but Bear dipped his paw in once more and was soon licking noisily. Phew, whispered Mole. Sorry, Mouse. Mouse patted him on the back. No harm done. Now, follow me. Mouse zipped to the left and right, keeping to the shadows. The rabbits raced behind, shivering excitedly. Mouse waved to Mole, but as he dodged a stinging nettle, he tripped over a root. Oops, he squeaked. Flump. Bear turned suddenly. Mole tucked his head under his paws. But Bear was busy with a long, sticky dribble right down his arm. Sorry, whispered Mole. Roly poly moly. Hmm. Mouse peered through the ferns. Listen up, team, she whispered. We need to be fast and silent. If we're going to get that honey, rabbits, you lead the way, he commanded. The rabbit brothers and mouse were masters at dodging thorns. They whizzed through the brambles and pole vaulted over the puddle. Taking a deep breath, Mole headed into the thorns. Oh, a prickle stuck in his bottom, but he didn't even squeak. I can do this, thought Mole. I'll leap over the puddle and finish with a commando roll on the grass. So he picked up a stick and began to run. <gasps> Splash! Oh no, just look at me, gasped Mole. I'm soaking. The rabbit brothers clung to each other. Mouse froze and bears slurping stopped. Bear's ears twitched. Bear's eyes popped. What's going on here? He growled. Oh, Mouse said she loves honey and she's going to get some, cried Mole from the puddle. What? Didn't you hear me say this honey is mine? roared Bear. Yes, I did, Mole squealed, but Mouse said she was going to... Oh, look! And Mouse slowly stretched out her arm and dipped it in the honey jar. She scooped out a golden pawful and licked her fingers triumphantly. Oh, cried Mole, covering her eyes. His eyes, excuse me. I can't look. Bear swung Mouse up in the air. And they both laughed and laughed. Bear rolled the rabbit brothers over in the grass and tickled Mole's tummy and toes. You win again, he laughed. You're all just too quick for me. The wriggly, giggly heap of paws and whiskers got stickier and stickier. Big Scary Bear is my favorite game, sighed Mole happily. Can we play it again, please? Oh, all right, smiled Bear, standing up. You four go and hide. I've got a great big jar of delicious chocolate and I'm not going to share. But I bet he will. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm pretty sure it's time for us to get out our bubble gum. So reach in your pocket. And remember, if you don't have a real pocket, a pretend pocket works just fine because what we're looking for is our pretend piece of bubble gum. Take the wrapper off it if there's a wrapper on it and toss the wrapper in the trash. My trash is over on this side this time. And then we're gonna pop the gum in our mouth, chew it up until it's all soft and squishy. And then we'll count to three and do something disgusting with it. Are you ready? Okay, let's pop it in our mouth and chew it up. I 
I think mine's done, so I'm gonna put out my hand and I'm gonna count to three. One, two, three. <laughs> Spit your gum in your hand and clap your other hand on top of it so it doesn't roll away, but now your hands are stuck together with sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your arm. And how do we get it off? Do you remember? We say, on stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your chin. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your back. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your nose. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your knee. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on mom or dad. You know I'll wait for you. Go ahead, find them. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your toe. On stick, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Definitely. It's time to throw it in the trash. Well, we've got another story about a bear. And I don't know that he's going to share because he's sleeping. This is called Bear Snores On. It's by Karma... Wilson. And interestingly, it's also illustrated by Jane Chapman. I bet she likes to draw bears and other forest creatures. Oh, it's winter time. This is published by Margaret McKeldry Books. And it's a rhyming story. In a cave in the woods, in his deep, dark lair, through the long, cold winter sleeps a great brown bear. Cuddled in a heap with his eyes shut tight, he sleeps through the day and he sleeps through the night. The cold winds howl and the night sounds growl, but the bear snores on. Will an itty bitty mouse pitter pat tiptoe creep crawls in the cave from the fluff cold snow? Mouse squeaked, oh, too damp, too dank, too dark. So he lights wee twigs with a small hot spark. The coals pip pop and the wind doesn't stop, but the bear snores on. Two glowing eyes sneak peek in the den. Mouse cries, who's there? And a hare hops in. Oh, mouse, says hare, long time no see. So they pop white corn and they brew black tea. The mouse sips wee slurps and the hare burps, big burps. But the bear snores on. A badger scuttles by and sniff snuffs at the air. I smell it yummy yums. Perhaps we can share. I've brought honey nuts, badger says with a grin. Let's divvy them up, cozy down, and dig in. And they nibble and they munch with a chew, chomp, crunch. But the bear snores on. Well, a gopher and a mole tunnel up through the floor, then a wren and a raven flutter in through the door. Mole mutters, what a night. 
What a storm, twitters Wren, and everybody clutters in the great bear's den. They tweet and they titter and they chat and they chitter, but the bear snores on. In a cave in the woods, a slumbering bear sleeps through the party in his very own lair. Lair is his den or his cave. Hare stokes the fire, mouse seasons the stew, and then a small pepper flake makes the bear, can you guess? Rachu! He blows and he sneezes and the whole crowd freezes. And the bear wakes up. Bear gnarls and he snarls. Bear roars and he rumbles. Bear jumps and he stomps. Bear growls and he grumbles. You've snuck in my lair, and you've all had fun. But me, I was sleeping, and I have had none. And he whimpers, and he moans, and he wails, and he groans, and the bear blubbers on. Mouse squeaks, don't fret. Don't fuss. Look, see, we can pop more corn. We can brew more tea. Bear gulps, bear gobbles. He sighs with delight. Then he spins tall tails through the blustery night. And when the sun peeks up on a crisp, clear dawn, bear can't sleep. But his friends snore on. All right, well, I think it's time for us to wiggle our fingers and our toes and our shoulders. And how about your nose? Can you wiggle your elbows and slap your knees and stretch your arms? Oh. And get ready, please, for the flannel board story. Now, interestingly, we had two books illustrated by Jane Chapman, and now we're going to have something on the flannel board in our closing book, Sandra Boynton. This is one of my favorites. It's called Moo Ba La La La. A cow says moo. And a sheep says, can you tell me? Ba. And three singing pigs La, la, la. No, no, you say. That isn't right. Pigs say oink all day and night. Now, rhinoceroses snort and snuff. And little dogs? Well, they go. Some other dogs go bow, wow, wow. I'll go put him over there as if he's chasing. And cats and kittens say meow. Quack, says the duck. And the horse says And then it's quiet now. What do you say? Are you saying it's time for one more story? Let's get ready for Bernard's favorite. The Going to Bed Book by Sandra Boynton, published by Little Simon. The sun has set not long ago. Now everybody goes below to take a bath in one big tub with soap all over, scrub, scrub, scrub. They hang their towels on the wall 
and fine pajamas, big and small. And with some on top and some beneath, they brush and brush and brush their teeth. And when the moon is on the rise, they all go up to exercise. And down once more, but not so fast. They're on their way to bed at last. The day is done. They say good night. And somebody turns off the light. The moon is high. The sea is deep. And they rock and rock and rock to sleep. Those are our stories. So I guess it's time for me to say good night. I hope I'll see you again next week. Sweet dreams.